Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another fun, fast Tinkercad project. So let's get cracking. Friends, for this project, we are going to hit create and we're going to do a code blocks project. I like to start by naming it. This is going to be called Smart Gyro Fidget. If you've never seen these before, check this out. They are fun. They print in place in very little time and they're even customizable if you're using them in a classroom. Step one is to create a bunch of variables. I'm gonna show you how this works once and then I'm gonna show you all the variables you need and have you create them on your own. We're gonna make the first one called rings and hit okay. You'll notice it shows up right here and then we're gonna do that again and again to make all of these variables. When you've got your full list of variables, we are gonna start setting them, bring that to the very top change it to the word rings and this is going to be the number three for now i want you to stay with the same numbers i have we can now right click on this and duplicate right click on that and duplicate we need a total of eight of these so we can right click and duplicate again to have those all filled in now the second one needs to switch to gap and as you can see i went ahead without you and then finally when this is done you need the last one to be start radius Double check to make sure yours all match mine, and then we'll fill in the numbers. Gap gets set as two, wall stays three, height is four, radius is gonna use nine. This is gonna be a formula in a minute. Rotation is zero, and then this start radius actually gets a variable. We put the radius out there. This is a technique that lets us save this variable for later. At this point, let's switch to math, bring out a math operation, and we're going to build this cone height. What we're going to do is we're going to put the variable gap out here, and we're going to add 1.4. I've done that math for you. Just trust me, it's going to work. Do one less double check to make sure that you've got all of these names correct, and you've got the numbers correct, and then we're going to start building our templates. We hit create template and give it a name. The, the first one is make rings. Hit OK. It gives us the define template. We'll move that down below for now. We are going to count with. We're going to go from one to the variable rings. This is how many rings are going to be created. The shape we're going to use is the wicked cool tube. When you bring this out, I'm going to change the color just for fun. Let's expand it and using our variables, the radius goes in the radius box. Notice these are alphabetical, so it's kind of easy to find. The wall goes in the wall box. The height goes in the height box. I'm gonna set the sides to 64, edge one, and steps 10. Now the reason we make variables is because we can change the variables. And we're gonna do that inside this loop we do need to switch it to the radius, and we're gonna do a tiny chunk of math here. Bring out your math variables, set it outside, and we're gonna do two times, so make sure you switch to multiplication, the wall. Bring that variable out just like that, and we're gonna drop it right there. This is where it gets cool. When we hit play, your code block will start building. There you can see we have got three rings for our awesome gyro fidget. How cool is that? Now from now on, I'm gonna have the speed faster and we're gonna make another template. This time it's gonna be the peg. So we're gonna do create template, type peg, tell it okay. I'm gonna put the create underneath. That way we can check it out in just a minute. Now I'm gonna scroll up so that we've got a better view of this peg area. We're gonna build our peg with the cone shape. Once again, expand its properties. We're gonna use the number 0 0.3 and press enter. The bottom radius is going to be two. And then under variables, we're gonna bring out that cone height that we created. Don't forget they're alphabetical, so it should be pretty easy to find. We're gonna leave the sides at 24. Under modify, we need to bring out a move. We're gonna move it using some math. Once again, bring out a math operator. And we're gonna do the cone height, change this to divided by, 
and 2. We do this because everything draws at 0, 0. You can see that that's half above and half below 0. This moves the next part up so that it's actually, so it's actually sitting on the work plane. Return to your shapes and grab a cylinder. We're going to put this on the edge of that. Notice if it doesn't drop in, just set it down and try again. Its radius is going to be 2, its height is going to be 3, and its sides are going to be 24. This just makes it so it matches the sides of our peg. We are also going to add a move, and to get this to line up right, we need to type negative 1.5, just like that. With that move in place, we need to create group. Drop that right inside, and then we need to bring out a rotation. Once again, drop it in. We are keeping it as X, but we are changing the rotation to negative 90. You can either type negative 90 or move it with the arrows. Then find your math, and we're going to bring out the XYZ00. Now we can define the hole. We are going to do this super fast by just hitting duplicate on our former part. I'm going to move this chunk down. I'm going to break this chunk off. Notice if you don't move it far enough, it snaps back. I'm going to throw out that cylinder and drop these two pieces in. You've got to make this a hole. Don't mess that up. You also need to type 0 0.35 and press enter. You need to make this bottom radius 2.75 and press enter. The rest of these pieces stay the same. Now we can pull this up a little bit, grab that rotation, drop it in, and finally throw out those other two pieces. Quick double check. You made it a hole, 0 0.35, 2.75. Of course, you've got the cone height, x-axis, negative 90, and the xyz. Friends, when you've got those in place, if we hit play, check it out. We have got the rings, we've got the hole, and we've got the peg ready to roll under the peg group. I'm going to take that multicolor, switch it instead to a yellow preset. One more quick play. Bingo, I think that looks more clear. Now we are going to make our rings. I'm going to break apart these two pieces and move them down. I'm going to get my create from template rings a little higher. We do need to bring out a set variable. This is where we need to set the radius back to the original radius or the start radius. Simple as that. Now we can bring out a count with. We're going to fill the two with a tiny chunk of math. Switch to your math. I'm going to set it out here. And it is going to be the variable rings minus one. Then you can grab the chunk of math and drop it in place. We're going to start by creating two holes using the sweet repeat command. So our steps are going to happen twice. So one step really gets us two holes. We need to grab the hole peg and drop it in. Now we need to find a move command. Of course, we drop it below. We are also going to need to rotate, so let's drop that at the same time. We need to do math for the move. Let's switch to the move and bring out our math chunk. We need to fill it with a couple of variables. It is going to be radius and gap. With those in place, we're going to drop them in the Y location. Make sure you do that with the left edge. We also need to change our rotation. It is going to be Z, and we're going to use the variable rotation. Finally, we bring out the math X, Y, Z. Next, we switch to our variables, and we're going to change that rotation. Switch to rotation and we need to adjust it by 180 degrees. Now we need to bring out another change and drop it in between the orange blocks. This one's gonna be called radius, and it is gonna have a chunk of math where we switch it to multiplication and it's two times the wall. Once you drop that in, we need one more of those changes. 
switch this one to the rotation, and now we need to change that number by 90 degrees. I'm gonna move this all a little to the left to make this a little easier. I'm gonna hide this peg here for a moment. We're gonna quickly create a group. We're also gonna add two more variable adjustments. We're gonna set the radius back to the start radius with that cool variable we created. And then we're gonna also set the rotation back to the initial zero of the entire project. Now this is really cool, friends. Go to your count, right click and duplicate it, set it down just below everything else. We want to delete the whole block and replace it with the peg block. I'm gonna throw away these two sets because we don't need those for this part. And if we simply drop this below, the final step is to throw out the gap variable and replace this zero with 1.5 and press enter. We need to add a quick move to wrap this piece up. Put that right underneath. Of course, it will use math again, so bring out your math block. And this math is height divided by two. And friends, when you hit play, you will all of a sudden have a sweet fidget check it out you can see the pins and the holes all the way around how awesome is that now these do look really cool hollow like this but let me show you quickly how you can add your initials to the center of it as well simply go to shapes bring out a cylinder expand its properties if we go to those variables we need to drop in the start radius. We also need to put in the height. I'm gonna switch those sides to 64. Still gonna do one for the edge and 10. And then we need this exact same move. So I'm gonna duplicate it, throw away the bonus piece and drop that in place. And now under shapes, we wanna add text. We wanna switch it to a hole, and because this is small, you've only got room for your initials. I'm gonna put MT for Mod Tech. You do have a couple of choices you can pick from. I'm gonna stay with multi-language. I'm also gonna keep the height. I am gonna modify it quickly with a move, with a chunk of math. We're gonna take that height variable, and we're gonna subtract one. For Z and then we also need to scale it real quickly I'll just show you how large those initials are right now you can see they are just huge we're gonna fix that with a scale you could use XYZ but I'm gonna use this so it scales everything the same amount friends I've fiddled around with this a little bit I think 0.35 is probably your best guess let's hit play and see how that works bingo that fits absolutely awesome. Finally, friends, we simply end with a create group. One more play and bingo, a fun gyro fidget with initials cut into it. And now I can get it ready for my printer by simply hitting export STL. And then I always save mine to my 3D modeling folder. Friends, I hope you had a ton of fun learning how to build it with code. Let me show you why we do this. You can change a few of these numbers. For instance, if you go to rings and press five, bingo, it rebuilds that same project with all the holes and everything necessary to print one with five rings. Note it takes a little longer to create and finally group, but after it was done, you would have a five ring gyro spinner. You can mess with the height and the radius as well. If you mess with these though, things will go a bit wackadoodle. If you find that your pins are too loose, you can bump this up to two. If you find that your pins are too tight, 
you could try something else like 1.25. Friends, I do want to take a moment to remind you about my website, ahlmodtech.com. I've got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with a ton of amazing categories. And then down below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and some Tinkercad essentials. Of course, I also want to remind you about the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach out to me almost instantly. Friends, please also note there is a link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a ton of members, and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.